Okay, so uh, all right, so we are going to talk about what we call the empirical rule for normal distribution, specifically for normally distributed um, data. Um, and so, obviously, if we have the empirical rule for normal distribution, then we have a normal distribution curve. So let me draw that to the best of my ability. And it's a symmetric bell-shaped curve. Um, so let's get detailed now with uh, the empirical rule. So when I have normally distributed data that follows this bell-shaped curve, the distribution, the center of this curve is where the mean is located. And this is population mean. If it's a uh, sample, then x bar. If I want to represent the data value in the data set that is um, located one standard deviation above the mean, then I would take the mean and I would add one standard deviation to it. I would take the mean and I would add one standard deviation to it. So I'm writing it in population form and sample form. If I want to represent the data value located two standard deviations above the mean, I would take the mean and I would add two standard deviations to it. Take the mean and add two standard deviations. If I want a data value three standard deviations above the mean, I'd take the mean and add three standard deviations, take the mean and add three standard deviations. If I want to locate a data value that is uh, one standard deviation below the mean, I would take the mean and I would subtract one standard deviation. Take the mean and subtract one standard deviation. Two standard deviations below the mean. Take the mean and subtract two standard deviations. Three standard deviations below the mean. Take the mean and subtract three standard deviations. X bar minus three S. So this is supposed to be symmetric and bell-shaped, right? So um, if I can, okay, so just to make it kind of symmetric. So I'm not going past that, you know, these, these curves, they do extend in both directions forever. Um, but we, I, you know, I stopped the three standard deviations away from the mean three above and three below because the empirical rule states that the majority of the data values are located within or between three standard deviations of the mean. All right, well, let's get detailed with percentages. So what this says is between or within one standard deviation of the mean. So between this value here and this value here, approximately 68% of all data values lie between this and this. One standard deviation um, of the mean. So one below, one above. If I want to go or determine the... Um, percentage of data values that lie within two standard deviations of the mean, so from here to here all the way, approximately 95% of all data values lie between those two numbers. And then within three standard deviations of the mean, let me go outside here, so between this value here and this value here, approximately 99% 0.7% of all data values lie between uh, within three standard deviations of the mean. So from here to here. So that means um, uh, that obviously the majority of all data values lie within one standard deviations of the one standard deviation of the mean. So between this value and this value, and I'll show you an example in a second. Um, well, if I'm talking about all data values, right, um, then obviously it's 100%. So 100%, you know, represents the total area under this curve. So 0.3% lie outside of this or below three standard deviations of the mean and above, right, three standard deviations of the mean. Um, so, you know, let me, uh, let me take that further. So let's say that Adult IQs is a typical example. Um, I'll stay in yellow. Adult IQ scores um, have a mean, and this is a population mean of 100, and a standard deviation of 15. Um, so before I go and ask any questions regarding that, let me draw my um, normal distribution curve because adult IQ scores are normally distributed. Um, so you're told adult IQ scores are normally distributed, their mean is 100, their standard deviation is 15. Um, um, since they're normally distributed, let's draw this bell-shaped curve. So let's um, 
That was a horrible, again, to the best of my ability. Sometimes it is beautiful and sometimes it's not. Why? Okay. <laughs> so that means the center of this curve is 100. That's my mean. One data value above the mean, right? Or one day, one, uh, the IQ score that is located one standard deviation above the mean is um, 115. So I'm taking the mean and I'm adding one standard deviation. Then I'm going to add another standard deviation or take the mean and add 15 and then 15. So 130 is the, the IQ score, the data value that lies two standard deviations above the mean. Add another um, standard deviation, so 145. So this is the data value or the IQ score that is three standard deviations above the mean. If I'm going to go below the mean, take 100 and subtract 15, I go to 85 is the IQ score that lies one standard deviation below the mean. Subtract another 15 or take 100 and subtract 2 times 15 or subtract 30. 70 is two standard deviations below the mean and 55 is three standard deviations below the mean. Um, all of the area under this curve represents 100%. Um, but majority are between or within, you know, from 55 to 145. Now, um, let's get detailed even further. And let's talk about the percentages. So uh, let's do it. How did I do it before? What did I do? I'll just keep it consistent. Green, red, and then well, yellow. So green. So 85 is one standard deviation below the mean. And 115 is one standard deviation above the mean. So between those two numbers, approximately 68% of all IQ scores lie between 85 and 115. The IQ score 70 is two standard deviations below the mean, and the IQ score 130 is two standard deviations above the mean. So we say that, according to the empirical rule, between or within two standard deviations, approximately 95% of all IQ scores lie between 70 and 130. Um, okay, I could take it further than that, right? I'll bring it down here. Between three standard deviations, or between 55 and 145, approximately 99.7% of all IQ scores lie between 55 and 145. So we would say that anything below 55 or you know, greater than 145 is definitely uh, special. Um, so let me ask a couple questions based on what I'm saying here. Um, so uh, what percentage? So let me make that smaller. So based on what we just determined using the empirical rule, what percent of all IQ scores um, lie between 70 and 130? Well, if you look at um, this situation, what percent of all IQ scores lie between 70 and 130? I'm asking for a percentage, so obviously I'm going to use the empirical rule. And 70 is two standard deviations below the mean, and 130 is two standard deviations above the mean. So approximately, I'm just going to say approx, 95% of, of all IQ scores lie between 70 and 130. What percent? So I can obviously ask a bunch of questions because we already kind of like set ourselves up to answer them. Where did I make that? Okay. So <clears throat> what else can I ask you? What percent of all IQ scores lie between um, 55 and 145. Well, I'm looking for a percent, so I'm going to use the empirical rule, and I am three standard deviations below the mean and three above. So I'm between or within three standard deviations above uh, of the mean. So I would say approximately 99.7% of all IQ scores lie between um, 55 and 145. So you can see, you know, it's not very difficult. Once I already have the graph in front of me and everything, it's not difficult to answer these questions, but I can get even more detailed. So um, let me ask again. So what percent of all IQ scores um, are greater 
than 145. So I'm going bigger than 145. So how do I get that piece out there? All right, well, that is the ultimate question. I want to do that in another video. I'm going to get more detailed now to the empirical rule. So again, the empirical rule is for normally distributed data. Um, and really, we focus on three standard deviations of the mean. So for this particular example, all these values on the horizontal scale represent IQ scores, because that's what I'm dealing with here. And once you're given a mean and a standard deviation, and you're given that this uh, situation is normally distributed, you can kind of answer a bunch of percent type of questions. Um, before I answer this one, which I will do in my next video, I want to ask, is 145 a significant uh, signi significantly low or high um, data value. So I don't know if you recall from my last video when I talked about the range rule of thumb. So the range rule of thumb, I think I have it still here. What did it say? The range rule of thumb said, where is it? I don't know where it is. The range rule of thumb stated that the majority or all significant or non-significant data values lie within two standard deviations of the mean. Well, that would make sense based on the empirical rule also. 95% of all data values lie between or within two standard deviations of the mean. So if I go outside of two standard deviations of the mean, then I am significant. So if I'm above two standard deviations above the mean, or in this case, above 130, then I would call that a significantly high, let me write that here, data value, right? So anything greater than one standard deviation of the mean is significantly high. Anything less than, um, sorry, anything less than two standard deviations below the mean is significantly low. So where is 145 located? Is that a significantly high or low data value? But 145 is a value that is three standard deviations above the mean, which is more than two standard deviations above the mean. So therefore, we would say, yes, it is significantly high. Um, let me ask another question. Is... One second. Is 90 a significantly low or high data value. Well, where is uh, the IQ score 90 located? I should say is the IQ score, because we're dealing with an IQ score. So it's an IQ score of 90, a significantly higher low data value. Well, what do you guys think? Where is an IQ score of, okay. Where's 90 located? 90 is located right here. Well, obviously between 85 and 100. So 90 is actually less than one standard deviation below the mean. It's, you know, almost one standard deviation below the mean, but it is within two standard deviations of the mean, right? It is between 70 and 130, in other words. So a score of 90 is not significantly low or high. It's non-significant. It's not special. It's uh, typical for this kind of situation. So, you know, the range rule of thumb still applies here as well. I don't want you to forget about that, okay? 